product. I am a product of the school system. We all are. For 13 years, I've had the same ideas hammered into my mind like a hammered hot metal. As excited as I would get when my teacher would tell me that we were doing a creative project, I would always find myself adhering to boundaries, limiting topics, and conformity. I'm now entering my 13th year in this system. And looking back on it, I honestly consider myself lucky to still have my creative muscle intact. I've watched way too many of my peers have their creativity eroded. For 13 years, I've watched way too many of my peers value a letter grade or a percentage more than their own mental health. Let that sink in for a second. I stand before you today to offer my insight about the flawed education system that we currently have in place. My name is Sean Cooner, and this is how you can survive the school system with your creativity intact. I still remember it as if it was yesterday. It was a cloudy April day, and I was in my science class. Our teacher had informed us that we were going to be tested on balancing complex chemical equations tomorrow, and that we should all take the night to study. So, like most of the students in my class, I went home and prepared myself for a long night of study. Studying, however, is easier said than done, especially if you're a creative person with a racing mind. Within 15 minutes, I found myself bored and distracted. I was doodling in between the numbers, crossing off words and making blackout poetry with my study guide, and best of all, having in-depth thought processes about everything but chemistry and balancing chemical equations. I eventually found myself angry and irritated. I was irritated because one, I had wasted my time, and two, I was learning about something that I wasn't really passionate about. I decided to rebel and fight back with the only weapon I've ever known my entire life, creativity. I want to come up with a shortcut, a hack, a workaround, something that when successfully done would save many of my peers time and effort. I want to come up with a method that was faster than my teachers. I began to work, and I found that my brain has started to work more mathematically than it had all week. I stayed up till 2 in the morning trying to find a method that was faster than my teachers, and with the help of coffee, Google, and a brain that I refused to turn off, I eventually did. I repeatedly tested this method on multiple, multiple different types of equations, and everything checked out. I went to bed full of newfound confidence, fully prepared to take the test tomorrow. Next day, I woke up and went to school. I took the test, and they were marked that exact day. Upon getting mine back, I quickly realized that I had failed. It wasn't the failure that had my attention, though, but rather the way that I had failed. On certain sections, I'd get every answer right, and others, I'd fail it completely. In my head, I thought to myself, well, it's not all that bad. I mean, my formula is half successful. I need to go home, work on it a little bit more, and it will eventually be fully successful. That right there is a creative thought process. To not view failure as something that will hold us back, but something to learn from. Now, as I was leaving the class, my teacher pulled me aside with my test in hand. I don't remember what she said word for word, but I do remember, however, her last line, and frankly, always will. If only you had answered the questions the way I taught you, maybe you would have passed. That, ironically enough, sums up our current education system in one sentence. If only you had answered the questions the way I taught you, maybe you would have passed. The definition of creativity is to make something new, whether it's an idea, an invention, or a piece of artwork. Let's dissect the situation through the lens of creativity. First, there is a problem. Seeing problems or challenges as something to learn from sparks creative thinking. Creative individuals don't see them as something that will hold us back, but rather something to learn from. Then, I spent a good chunk of my time bored and daydreaming. In 1926, the psychologist Graham Wallace came up with the four stages of creativity. Preparation, incubation, illumination, and verification. All that time, it may have looked like I was bored and procrastinating, but it's actually a super important step of the creative process called incubation. Our current education system operates in a very fast-paced and industrial-esque way. Students have information thrown at them for six hours each day, and there's very little time to simply think and reflect. As students who are striving to be more creative, we have to find that time for judgment-free thinking and reflection outside of school. Then there was a failure. The failure wasn't seen as a stopping point, but as a point to grow from. Getting a bad grade doesn't mean that you stop learning. Remember, as APJ Abdul Kalam once said, the word fail stands for first attempt in learning. The idea of having failed wasn't something that I feared, 
but rather something that I embraced. In our current education system, we're taught that failure is something to fear and avoid at all costs. But the thing is, fear is the enemy of creativity. The school system is churning out a workforce that are consumers of information. We memorize and regurgitate instead of being students that create content. The thing is, we need more creators in the world rather than consumers. With the advance of technology today, we can't afford to have a population of only consumers. A computer is far better at memorization than a person. You, finding information and using it in creative ways is what the employers of the future are going to be looking for. Employers like Google and Facebook aren't really going to care about who can crunch the numbers the fastest, but rather who can find information and create something that's new, innovative, and exciting from it. Now, on top of teaching us to be consumers, our current education system also teaches us to constantly think in a fixed mindset. Carol Dweck, a professor of psychology at Stanford University, states that in a fixed mindset, people believe their basic qualities, like their intelligence or talent, are simply fixed traits. They spend their time documenting their intelligence or talent instead of developing them. They also believe that talent alone creates success. They're wrong. A large portion of our, a large portion of our learning is gauged using tests. You can always beg your teacher for a redo or redo the course, but in most cases, the grade you get is the grade that you're stuck with. I've personally found this no retest policy to be prevalent in science or math-based courses. We're subliminally taught that mistakes can't be fixed and that mistakes can't be learned from. This ultimately leads to students being transformed into fixed mindset thinkers. Now, on the other hand, she explains that in a growth mindset, People believe that their most basic abilities can be developed through dedication and hard work. Brains and talent are just the starting point. This view creates a love of learning that is a love of learning and a resilience that is essential for great accomplishment. Growth mindsets and creativity go hand in hand, and the first step to having an education system that embraces creativity is by promoting students to take one on. Most, if not all, successful people think in a growth mindset, whether they recognize it or not. The interesting thing is that they learned to think that way themselves, and it wasn't something taught to them by school. So students who are striving to be more creative, self-educate about the benefits of having a growth mindset and strive to take one on. There are, however, some glimmers of hope in our current system. In BC, there's a newly added creativity competency within the curriculum. There are also teachers out there who recognize that things need to change and that students can't be taught the same way they th that they were 100 years ago. There are teachers who are doing things such as growth-based progress supports, genius hour or 20% time allowing students to study what they want, and passion-based projects. Although all of these things are great, there's still a lot of work that still needs to be done. So what needs to happen? Let's reimagine. Reimagine the school system. Ideally, there would be individualized learning personalized for each student. There would be real-world challenges. Students would be involved in their communities and would be using creativity to solve problems that affect their daily lives. Playing would be celebrated. Failure would be used as a tool to learn from. Students would essentially take charge of their own learning, and as Sir Ken Robinson says, creativity would be as important as literacy. This new education system would shape students into creative, active thinkers who are eager to contribute to society. In short, this would be a school system that helps students keep their creativity intact. Now the question comes to, how can you survive the system with your creativity intact? Here's a couple tips. Participate in the arts. Did you know that in college, Steve Jobs took a calligraphy course? He didn't know what his goal was at the time, but he took it because it was a topic that he was genuinely interested in. This came in handy later in life when he decided to come up with fonts. Fonts went on to revolutionize digital communication. So students, Pursue things that you're genuinely interested in, even if it doesn't align with your current goals at the time. Being a musician, specifically a drummer, I found that the arts have really boosted my creativity. Taking up and practicing an art form, in my case music, has opened me up to new ways of thinking and new experiences that I would have never had otherwise. Deschedule yourself. Give yourself time to breathe. Give your mind time to simply think about nothing, because frankly, that's when ideas are born. Parents. Give your kids time for free play, because quite honestly, that's when they're at their most creative. I've been lucky enough in my childhood to, have not be to not be scheduled all the time, and I was given time to simply go outside and just play. I credit a lot of my own creativity to that one simple factor. Collaborate. 
Working with others will always spark new ideas. It'll also open you up to new ways of thinking that you would never have been exposed to otherwise. My music has allowed me to collaborate with others. I've met other musicians online and in person, and I've been able to learn about opportunities that I wouldn't have heard otherwise. My music account on Instagram, which currently has over 13,000 followers, has also led me to opportunities in business and marketing. And finally, seek to solve real world challenges. Some of the best creative ideas have been thought of in an attempt to solve a real world issue. I've been motivated by a real, real world issue. That's why I'm on this stage today. That failed chemistry test is why I stand before you. Creativity is what fundamentally makes us human. It's who we are. I stand before you on the stage, not because school brought me here, but because my creativity did. So yes, I am a product, but rather I'm a product of my own creativity. Thank you.